The History of the House of Rothschild by Andrew Hitchcock Definition of Zionism An organization of Jews whose goal is to create a nation for Jews. Definition of Judaism Jews collectively who practice a religion based on the Torah and the Talmud. The Rothschilds have been in control of the world for a very long time, their tentacles reaching into many aspects of our daily lives, as is documented in the following timeline. However, before you jump to the timeline, please read this invaluable introduction which will tell you who the Rothschilds are as opposed to who they claim to be. The Rothschilds claim that they are Jewish, when in fact they are Karsers. They are from a country called Karsariah, which occupied the land locked between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea which is now predominantly occupied by Georgia. The reason the Rothschilds claim to be Jewish is that the Karsers under the instruction of the king, converted to the Jewish faith in 740 AD, but of course that did not include converting their Asiatic Mongolian genes to the genes of the Jewish people. You will find that approximately 90% of people in the world today who call themselves Jews are actually Karsers, or as they like to be known, Ashkenazi Jews. These people knowingly lie to the world with their claims that the land of Israel is theirs by birthright, when in actual fact their real homeland is over 800 miles away in Georgia. So, next time you hear an Israeli prime minister bleating about the so-called persecution of the Jews, consider this, every prime minister of Israel has been an Ashkenazi Jew. Therefore when all these prime ministers have current favor with the West for their re-establishment of a Jewish homeland, they have knowingly and deliberately lied to you, as they were never from that region, and they well know it, because it is they who call themselves Ashkenazi Jews. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9, states the following which would appear to be about these Ashkenazi Jews. I know thy works, and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. The most wealthy bloodline in the world bar none, and the leader of the Ashkenazi Jews in the world today is the Rothschild family. As you will see in the timeline, the Rothschilds have obtained this position through lies, manipulation and murder. Their bloodline also extends into the royal families of Europe, and the following family names, Aestir, Bundy, Collins, Dupont, Freeman, Kennedy, Morgan, Oppenheimer, Rockefeller, Sassoon, Schiff, Taft, and Van Duen. However, these are not the only bloodlines to worry about. You are probably aware of the centuries-old practice undertaken by many Ashkenazi Jews whereby they would change their name, in order for them to appear part of the dominant race of the country in which they lived, so as they could obtain influential positions in that country, which they would then exploit to serve their real masters elsewhere. There is plenty of evidence to prove the Rothschilds continue that deceptive tradition. Furthermore the Rothschilds are known to sire many children secretly that they can put into positions of power when required. This started with the very first man who took the name Rothschild, who had a secret sixth son. Finally, remember the world is a diverse place, I could if I want to change my name to Rothschild, or any of the names listed above, and that would not make me part of this family any more than converting to Judaism in 740 AD will make these Ashkenazes Jewish. Please, therefore, do not automatically assume someone you see with the name Rothschild or any of the names listed above are part of the Rothschild criminal network. Furthermore and most importantly, the majority of Ashkenazi Jews are innocent and not part of this network. Check the facts out for yourself first, this article is designed to inform people who the enemy is, not single out people of a particular race or people with a particular surname, who may have nothing to do with this Rothschild criminal network. 1743, Meyer Amskelbauer, an Ashkenazi Jew, is born in Frankfurt, Germany, the son of Moser's Amskelbauer, a moneylender and the proprietor of a counting house. Moser's Amskelbauer places a red sign above the entrance door to his counting house. This sign is a red hexagram, which geometrically and numerically translates into the number 666, which under Rothschild instruction will end up on the Israeli flag some two centuries later. 1753, Gottel Schnipper, an Ashkenazi Jew, future wife of Meyer Amskelbauer, born to respected merchant, Wolf Salomon Schnipper. 1760, during this decade Meyer Amskelbauer works for a bank owned by the Oppenheimers in Hanover, Germany. He is highly successful and becomes a junior partner. Whilst working at the bank he becomes acquainted with General von Esterf. Following his father's death, Bauer returns to Frankfurt to take over his father's business. Bauer recognizes the significance of the red hexagram and changes his name from Bauer to Rothschild, after the red hexagram or sign signifying 666 hanging over the entrance door Roth, is German for, red, Schild, is German for, sign. 
Now Meyer and Skull Rothschild, he discovers that General von Esterf is now attached to the court of Prince William IX of Hesse-Hanau, one of the richest royal houses in Europe, which gained its wealth by the hiring out of Hessian soldiers to foreign countries for vast profits, a practice that continues today in the form of exporting, peacekeeping, troops throughout the world. He therefore makes the general's reacquaintance on the pretext of selling him valuable coins and trinkets at discounted prices. As he plans, Rothschild is subsequently introduced to Prince William himself who is more than pleased with discounted prices he charges for his rare coins and trinkets, and Rothschild offers him a bonus for any other business the prince can direct his way. Rothschild subsequently becomes close associates with Prince William and ends up doing business with him and members of the court. He soon discovers that loaning money to governments and royalty is more profitable than loaning to individuals, as the loans are bigger and are secured by the nation's taxes. 1769, Meyer Amskel Rothschild is given permission by Prince William to hang a sign on the front of his business premises declaring that he is, M. a Rothschild, by appointment court factor to His Serene Highness, Prince William of Hanau. 1770, Meyer Amskel Rothschild draws up plans for the creation of the Illuminati and entrusts Ashkenazi Jew, Adam Weishaupt, a crypto-Jew who was outwardly Roman Catholic, with its organization and development. The Illuminati is to be based upon the teachings of the Talmud, which is in turn, the teachings of rabbinical Jews. It was to be called the Illuminati as this is a Luciferian term which means, keepers of the light. Meyer Amskel Rothschild marries Guttel Schnipper. 1773, Amskel Meyer Rothschild born, the first of Meyer Amskel Rothschild's sons. He like all his brothers who follow him, will enter the family business at the age of 12. 1774, Salomon Meyer Rothschild born. 1776, Adam Weishaupt officially completes his organization of the Illuminati on May 1 of this year. The purpose of the Illuminati is to divide the Goyim, all non-Jews, through political, economic, social, and religious means. The opposing sides were to be armed and incidents were to be provided in order for them to fight amongst themselves, destroy national governments, destroy religious institutions, and eventually destroy each other. Weishaupt soon infiltrates the Continental Order of Freemasons with this Illuminati doctrine and establishes lodges of the Grand Orient to be their secret headquarters. This was all under the orders and finance of Meyer Amskel Rothschild and the concept has spread and is followed within Masonic lodges worldwide to the present day. Weishaupt also recruits 2,000 paid followers including the most intelligent men in the field of arts and letters, education, science, finance, and industry. They were instructed to follow the following methods in order to control people. 1. Use monetary and sex bribery to obtain control of men already in high places, in the various levels of all governments and other fields of endeavor. Once influential persons had fallen for the lies, deceits, and temptations of the Illuminati they were to be held in bondage by application of political and other forms of blackmail, threats of financial ruin, public exposure, and fiscal harm, even death to themselves and loved members of their families. 2. The faculties of colleges and universities were to cultivate students possessing exceptional mental ability belonging to well-bred families with international leanings, and recommend them for special training in internationalism, or rather the notion that only a one-world government can put an end to recurring wars and strife. Such training was to be provided by granting scholarships to those selected by the Illuminati. 3. All influential people trapped into coming under the control of the Illuminati, plus the students who had been specially educated and trained, were to be used as agents and placed behind the scenes of all governments as experts and specialists. This was so they would advise the top executives to adopt policies which would in the long run serve the secret plans of the Illuminati One World Conspiracy and bring about the destruction of the governments and religions they were elected or appointed to serve. 4. To obtain absolute control of the press, at that time the only mass communications media which distributed information to the public, so that all news and information could be slanted in order to make the masses believe that a one-world government is the only solution to our many and varied problems. 1777, Nathan Meyer Rothschild born. 1784, Adam Weishaupt issues his order for the French Revolution to be started by by Maximilien Robespierre in book form. This book was written by one of Weishaupt's associates, Xavier Zwack, and sent by courier from Frankfurt to Paris. However Ian route there, the courier is struck by lightning, the book detailing this plan discovered by the police, and handed over to the Bavarian authorities. As a consequence, the Bavarian government orders the police to raid Weishaupt's Masonic lodges of the Grand Orient, and the homes of his most influential associates. Clearly, the Bavarian authorities were convinced that the book that was discovered was a very real threat by a private group of influential people to use wars and revolutions to achieve their political ends. 
1785, the Bavarian government outlaw the Illuminati and close all the Bavarian lodges of the Grand Orient. Myram Rothschild moves his family home to a five-story house in Frankfurt which he shares with the Schiff family. 1786, the Bavarian government published the details of the Illuminati plot in a document entitled, The Original Writings of the Order and Sect of the Illuminati. They then sent this document to all the heads of church and state throughout Europe, but sadly their warning is ignored. 1788, Kalman, Karl Meyer Rothschild born. 1789, due to the European ignorance of the Bavarian government's warning, the Illuminati's plan for a French revolution succeeded from this year to 1793. This revolution was a banker's dream, it established a new constitution and passed laws that forbade the Roman church from levying tithes, taxes, and also removed its exemption from taxation. 1790, Meyer Amskel Rothschild states. Let me issue and control a nation's money, and I care not who writes the laws. 1791, the Rothschilds get control of a nation's money, through Alexander Hamilton, their agent in George Washington's cabinet, when they set up a central bank in the USA called the First Bank of the United States. This is established with a 20-year charter. 1792, Jacob, James, Meyer Rothschild born. 1796, Amskel Meyer Rothschild marries Eva Hanau. 1798, John Robison publishes a book entitled, Proofs of a Conspiracy Against All the Religions and Governments of Europe Carried On in the Secret Meetings of Freemasons, Illuminati, and Reading Societies. In this book, Professor Robison of the University of Edinburgh, one of the leading intellects of his time, who in 1783 was elected General Secretary of the Royal Society of Edinburgh, gave details of the whole Rothschild Illuminati plot. He advised how he had been a high-degree Mason in the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry and had been invited by Adam Wyshort to Europe, where he had been given a revised copy of Wyshort's conspiracy. However, although he pretended to go along with it, Professor Rob Ison did not agree with it and therefore published his aforementioned book. The book included details of the Bavarian government's investigation into the Illuminati and the French Revolution. That same year on the 19th of July, David Papin, president of Harvard University, lectured the graduating class on the influence Illuminism was having on American politics and religion. At the age of 21, Nathan Meyer Rothschild leaves Frankfurt for England, where with a large sum of money given to him by his father, he sets up a banking house in London. 1800, Solomon Meyer Rothschild marries Caroline Stern. 1806, Napoleon states that it is his. Object to remove the House of Hesse Castle from rulership and to strike it out of the list of powers. On hearing this, Prince William IX of Hesse Hanau flees Germany, goes to Denmark, and entrusts his fortune valued at $3 million at that time to Meyer Amskel Rothschild for safekeeping. Nathan Meyer Rothschild marries Hannah Berendt Cohen, the daughter of a wealthy London merchant. 1808 Nathan Meyer Rothschild has his first son born Lionel Nathan de Rothschild. 1810 Sir Francis Baring and Abraham Goldsmith die. This leaves Nathan Meyer Rothschild as the remaining major banker in England. Solomon Meyer Rothschild goes to Vienna, Austria and sets up the bank, M. von Rothschild and Son. 1811, the charter for the Rothschilds Bank of the United States runs out and Congress votes against its renewal. Nathan Meyer Rothschild is not amused and he states. Either the application for renewal of the charter is granted, or the United States will find itself involved in a most disastrous war. However the United States stands firm and the charter is not renewed, which causes Nathan Meyer Rothschild to issue another threat, teach those impudent Americans a lesson. Bring them back to colonial status. 1812, backed by Rothschild money and Nathan Meyer Rothschild's orders, the British declare war on the United States. The Rothschild's plan was to cause the United States to build up such a debt in fighting this war that they would have to surrender to the Rothschilds and allow the charter for the Rothschild-owned First Bank of the United States to be renewed. Meyer Amskel Rothschild dies. The eldest son of the eldest son was to become the head of the family, this condition could only be overturned when the majority of the family agreed otherwise. The eldest son of the eldest son was to become the head of the family, this condition could only be overturned when the majority of the family agreed otherwise. This was straight away the case and Nathan Meyer Rothschild was elected head of the family following his father, Meyer Amskel Rothschild's death. Jacob James Meyer Rothschild goes to Paris, France to set up the bank, de Rothschild Frères. Nathaniel de Rothschild, the son-in-law of Jacob James Meyer Rothschild, born. 
1814, with regard to the $3 million Prince William IX of Hesse Hanau had entrusted to Meyer Amskel Rothschild for safekeeping. For an account of what happened next, we turn to the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1905 edition, volume 10, page 494, which states. According to legend this money was hidden away in wine casks, and, escaping the search of Napoleon's soldiers when they entered Frankfurt, was restored intact in the same casks in 1814, when the elector, Prince William IX of Hesse Hanau, returned to the electorate, Germany. The facts are somewhat less romantic, and more businesslike. This last line indicates the money was never returned by Rothschild to Prince William IX of Hesse Hanau. The encyclopedia goes on to state, Nathan Meyer Rothschild invested this $3 million in gold from the East India Company knowing that it would be needed for Wellington's peninsular campaign. On the stolen money Nathan made, no less than for profits, I on the sale of Wellington's paper which he bought at 50 cents on the dollar and collected at par, 2 on the sale of gold to Wellington, 3 on its repurchase, and 4 on forwarding it to Portugal. 1815 the five Rothschild brothers worked to supply gold to both Wellington's army, through Nathan in England, and Napoleon's army, through Jacob in France, and begin their policy of funding both sides in wars. The Rothschilds love wars because they are massive generators of risk-free debt. This is because they are guaranteed by the government of a country, and therefore the efforts of the population of that country, and it doesn't matter if that country loses the war because the loans are given on the guarantee that the victor will honor the debts of the vanquished. Whilst the Rothschilds are funding both sides in this war, they use the banks they have spread out across Europe to give them the opportunity to set up an unrivaled postal service network of secret routes and fast couriers. The post these couriers carried was to be opened up by these couriers and their details given to the Rothschilds so they always were one step ahead of current events. Furthermore, these Rothschild couriers were the only merchants allowed to pass through the English and French blockades. It was these couriers who also kept Nathan Meyer Rothschild up to date with how the war was going so he could use that intelligence to buy and sell from his position on the stock exchange in accordance with that intelligence. One of Rothschild's couriers was a man named Rothworth. When the outcome of the Battle of Waterloo was won by the British, Rothworth took off for the Channel and was able to deliver this news to Nathan Meyer Rothschild, a full 24 hours before Wellington's own courier. At that time British bonds were called consuls and they were traded on the floor of the stock exchange. Nathan Meyer Rothschild instructed all his workers on the floor to start selling consoles. They made all the other traders believe that the British had lost the war so they started selling frantically. Therefore the consoles plummeted in value which was when Nathan Meyer Rothschild discreetly instructed his workers to purchase all the consoles they could lay their hands on. When news came through that the British had actually won the war, the consoles went up to a level even higher than before the war ended leaving Nathan Meyer Rothschild with a return of approximately 20 to 1 on his investment. This gave the Rothschild family complete control of the British economy, now the financial centre of the world following Napoleon's defeat, and forced England to set up a new Bank of England, which Nathan Meyer Rothschild controlled. Interestingly 100 years later the New York Times would run a story stating that Nathan Meyer Rothschild's grandson had attempted to secure a court order to suppress publication of a book which had this insider trading story in it. The Rothschild family claimed the story was untrue and libelous, but the court denied the Rothschild's request and ordered the family to pay all court costs. Back to 1815, this is the year Nathan Meyer Rothschild makes his famous statement. I care not what puppet is placed upon the throne of England to rule the empire on which the sun never sets. The man who controls Britain's money supply controls the British Empire, and I control the British money supply. He would go on to brag that in the 17 years he had been in England he had increased the £20,000 stake given to him by his father, 2,500 times to £50 million. The Rothschilds also used their control of the Bank of England to replace the method of shipping gold from country to country, and instead used their five banks spread across Europe to set up a system of paper debits and credits, the banking system of today. By the end of this century, a period of time that was known as the Age of the Rothschilds, it is estimated that the Rothschild family controlled half the wealth of the world. However something that did not go well for the Rothschilds this year was the Congress of Vienna, which started in September, 1814, and concluded in June of this year. The reason for this Congress of Vienna was for the Rothschilds to create a form of world government, to give them complete political control over much of the civilized world. Many of the European governments were in debt to the Rothschilds, so they figured they could use that as a bargaining tool. However the Tsar Alexander I of Russia, who had not succumbed to a Rothschild central bank, would not go along with the plan, so the Rothschild world government plan failed. Enraged by this, Nathan Meyer Rothschild swore that someday he or his descendants would destroy the Tsar Alexander I's entire family and descendants. 
Unfortunately he was true to his word and 102 years later Rothschild funded Bolsheviks would act upon that promise. Interestingly, world government fanatic and Ashkenazi Jew, Henry Kissinger, did his doctoral dissertation on the Congress of Vienna. 1816, the American Congress passes a bill permitting yet another Rothschild-dominated central bank, which gives the Rothschilds control of the American money supply again. This is called the Second Bank of the United States and is given a 20-year charter. The British war against the America therefore ends with the deaths of thousands of British and American soldiers, but the Rothschilds get their bank. 1818, following the French securing massive loans in 1817 in order to help rebuild after their disastrous defeat at Waterloo, Rothschild agents bore vast amounts of French government bonds causing their value to increase. On 5 November they dumped the lot on the open market causing their value to plummet and France to go into a financial panic. The Rothschilds then stepped in to take control of the French money supply. This was the same year the Rothschilds were able to loan £5 million to the Prussian government. 1821, Kelman, Karl Meyer Rothschild was sent to Naples, Italy. He would end up doing a lot of business with the Vatican and Pope Gregory XVI subsequently conferred upon him the Order of St. George. Also, whenever the Pope received Kalman, he would give him his hand rather than the customary toe to kiss, which showed the extent of Kalman's power over the Vatican. 1822, the Emperor of Austria made the five Rothschild brothers barons. Nathan Meyer Rothschild chose not to take up the title. 1823, the Rothschilds take over the financial operations of the Catholic Church, worldwide. 1827, Sir Walter Scott publishes his nine-volume set, The Life of Napoleon, and in volume two he states that the French Revolution was planned by the Illuminati, Adam Weishaupt, and was financed by the money changers of Europe, the Rothschilds. 1832, President Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States from 1829 to 1837, runs the campaign for his second term in office under the slogan, Jackson and No Bank. This is in reference to his plan to take the control of the American money system to benefit the American people, not for the profiteering of the Rothschilds. 1833, President Andrew Jackson starts removing the government's deposits from the Rothschild-controlled Second Bank of the United States and instead deposits them into banks directed by Democratic bankers. This causes the Rothschilds to panic and so they do what they do best, contract the money supply causing a depression. President Jackson knows what they are up to and later states. You are a den of thieves vipers, and I intend to rout you out, and by the eternal God, I will rout you out. 1834, the Italian revolutionary leader, Giuseppe Mazzini, is selected by the Illuminati to direct their revolutionary program throughout the world and would serve in that capacity until he died in 1872. 1835, on 30 January, an assassin tries to shoot President Jackson, but miraculously both of the assassin's pistols misfired. President Jackson would later claim that he knew the Rothschilds were responsible for that attempted assassination. He is not the only one, the assassin, Richard Lawrence, who was found not guilty by reason of insanity, later bragged that powerful people in Europe had hired him and promised to protect him if he were caught. The Rothschilds acquire the rights in the Almaden Quicksilver mines in Spain. This was at the time the biggest concession in the world and as Quicksilver was a vital component in the refining of gold or silver this gave the Rothschilds a virtual world monopoly. 1836, following his years of fighting against the Rothschilds and their central bank in America, President Andrew Jackson finally succeeds in throwing the Rothschilds central bank out of America, when the bank's charter is not renewed. It would not be until 1913 that the Rothschilds would be able to set up their third central bank in America, the Federal Reserve, and to ensure no mistakes are made, this time they will put one of their own bloodline, Jacob Schiff, in charge of the project. Nathan Meyer Rothschild dies and the control of his bank, N. M. Rothschild and Sons is passed on to his younger brother, James Meyer Rothschild. 1837, the Rothschilds send one of their own, August Belmont, an Ashkenazi Jew, to America to salvage their banking interests defeated by President Andrew Jackson. 1840, the Rothschilds become the Bank of England's bullion brokers. They set up agencies in California and Australia. 1841, President John Tyler, the 10th President of the United States from 1841 to 1845, vetoed the act to renew the charter for the Bank of the United States. He goes on to receive hundreds of letters threatening him with assassination. 1844, Salomon Meyer Rothschild purchases the United Coal Mines of Vikovis and Austro-Hungarian Blast Furnace Company that would go on to be one of the top 10 global industrial concerns. Benjamin Disraeli, an Ashkenazi Jew, who would go on to become British Prime Minister twice, the only admitted Ashkenazi Jew to do so, publishes Koningsby, in which he characterizes Nathan Meyer Rothschild as
the Lord and Master of the money markets of the world, and of course virtually Lord and Master of everything else. He literally held the revenues of southern Italy in porn, and monarchs and ministers of all countries courted his advice and were guided by his suggestions. 1845, the great American patriot, Andrew Jackson, seventh president of the United States, dies. Before his death he is asked what he regarded his as greatest achievement. He replies without hesitation. I killed the bank, this is in reference to the fact he banished the Rothschilds' second bank of the United States in 1836. Jacob James Meyer Rothschild, who by now had married his niece, Betty, Solomon Meyer Rothschild's daughter, now known as Baron James de Rothschild, wins the contract to build the first major railway line across the country. This was called the Chemin de Fer du Nord and ran initially from Paris to Valenciennes and then joined with the Austrian rail network built by his brother and wife's father, all sounds a bit sordid doesn't it, Salomon Meyer Rothschild. 1847, Lionel de Rothschild now married to the daughter of his uncle, Kalman, Karl Meyer Rothschild, is elected to the parliamentary seat for the City of London. A requirement for entering Parliament was to take an oath in the true faith of a Christian. Lionel de Rothschild refused to do this as he was Jewish and his seat in Parliament remained empty for 11 years until new oaths were allowed. He must have been an invaluable representative for his constituency, bearing in mind he could never vote on any bill as he never entered Parliament. I wonder how he managed to keep his parliamentary seat for 11 years. 1848, Karl Marx, an Ashkenazi Jew, publishes The Communist Manifesto. Interestingly at the same time as he is working on this, Karl Ritter of Frankfurt University was writing the antithesis which would form the basis for Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche's Nietzscheanism. This Nietzscheanism was later developed into fascism and then into Nazism and was used to foment the First and Second World Wars. Marx, Ritter, and Nietzsche were all funded and under the instruction of the Rothschilds. The idea was that those who direct the overall conspiracy could use the differences in those two so-called ideologies to enable them to divide larger and larger factions of the human race into opposing camps so that they could be armed and then brainwashed into fighting and destroying each other, and particularly, to destroy all political and religious institutions. The same plan put forward by Weishaupt in 1776. Eva Hanau, Amskel-Meyer Rothschild's wife dies. 1849, Guttelschnipper, Meyer Amskel Rothschild's wife dies. Before her death she would nonchalantly state. If my sons did not want wars, there would be none. 1850, construction begins this decade on the manor houses of Montmore in England and Ferriers in France, more Rothschild's manors will follow throughout the world, all of them filled with works of art. Jacob James Rothschild in France is said to be worth 600 million francs, which at the time was 150 million francs more than all the other bankers in France put together. 1852, N.M. Rothschild and Sons begins refining gold and silver for the Royal Mint and the Bank of England and other international customers. 1853, Nathaniel de Rothschild, the son-in-law of Jacob, James, Meyer Rothschild, purchases Chateau Brain Mouton, the Bordeaux vineyard of Mouton, and renames it Chateau Mouton Rothschild. 1854, Caroline Stern, Solomon Meyer Rothschild's wife, dies. 1855, Amskel Meyer Rothschild dies. Salomon Meyer Rothschild dies. Kalman, Karl Meyer Rothschild dies. 1858, Lionel de Rothschild finally takes his seat in Parliament when the requirement to take an oath in the true faith of a Christian is broadened to include other oaths. He becomes the first Jewish member of the British Parliament. 1861, President Abraham Lincoln, 16th President of the United States from 1860 till his assassination in 1865, approaches the big banks in New York to try to obtain loans to support the ongoing American Civil War. As these large banks were heavily under the influence of the Rothschilds, they offer him a deal they know he cannot accept, 24% to 36% interest on all monies loaned. Lincoln is very angry about this high level of interest and so he prints his own debt-free money and informs the public that this is now legal tender for both public and private debts. 1862, by April dollar for for 9,338,902 worth of Lincoln's debt-free money has been printed and distributed. He states of this. We gave the people of this republic the greatest blessing they ever had, their own paper money to pay their own debts. That same year the Times of London publishes a story containing the following statement, if that mischievous financial policy, which had its origin in the North American Republic, should become indirect down to a fixture, then that government will furnish its own money without cost. It will pay off debts and be without a debt. It will have all the money necessary to carry on its commerce. It will become prosperous beyond precedent in the history of civilized governments of the world.
the brains and the wealth of all countries will go to North America. That government must be destroyed or it will destroy every monarchy on the globe. 1863. President Abraham Lincoln discovers that Tsar of Russia, Alexander II, 1855-1881, was having problems with the Rothschilds as well as he was refusing their continual attempts to set up a central bank in Russia. The Tsar then gives President Lincoln some unexpected help. The Tsar issued orders that if either England or France actively intervened in the American Civil War and helped the South, Russia would consider such action a declaration of war and take the side of President Lincoln. To show that he wasn't messing about, he sent part of his Pacific fleet to port in San Francisco and another part to New York. The Rothschild Banking House in Naples, Italy, C.M. de Rothschild e Figli, closes following the unification of Italy. The Rothschilds use one of their own in America, John D. Rockefeller, to form an oil business called Standard Oil which eventually takes over all of its competition. 1864, Rothschild, August Belmont, who by now is the Democratic Party's national chairman, supports General George McClellan as the Democratic nominee to run against President Abraham Lincoln in this year's election. Much to the anger of Belmont, President Lincoln wins the election. 1865, in a statement to Congress, President Abraham Lincoln states, I have two great enemies, the Southern Army in front of me, and the financial institutions in the rear. Of the two, the one in my rear is my greatest foe. Later that year, on the 14th of April, President Lincoln is assassinated, less than two months before the end of the American Civil War. Following a brief training period in the Rothschilds' London Bank, Jacob Schiff, a Rothschild, born in their house in Frankfurt, arrives in America at the age of 18, with instructions and the finance necessary to buy into a banking house there. The purpose of this was to carry out the following tasks. 1. Gain control of America's money system through the establishment of a central bank. 2. Find desirable men, who for a price, would be willing to serve as stooges for the Illuminati and promote them into high places in the federal government, the Congress, Supreme Court, and all the federal agencies. 3. Create minority group strife throughout the nations, particularly targeting the whites and blacks. 4. Create a movement to destroy religion in the United States, with Christianity as the main target. Nathaniel de Rothschild becomes Member of Parliament for Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire. 1868, Jacob, James, Meyer Rothschild dies, shortly after purchasing Chateau Laffert, one of the four great premier grand crew estates of France. He is the last of Meyer Amskel Rothschild's sons to die. 1870, Nathaniel de Rothschild dies. 1871, an American general named, Albert Pike, who had been enticed into the Illuminati by Guisp Mazzini, completes his military blueprint for three world wars and various revolutions throughout the world, culminating into moving this great conspiracy into its final stage. The First World War is to be fought for the purpose of destroying the Tsar in Russia, as promised by Nathan Meyer Rothschild in 1815. The Tsar is to be replaced with communism which is to be used to attack religions, predominantly Christianity. The differences between the British and German empires are to be used to foment this war. The Second World War is to be used to foment the controversy between fascism and political Zionism with the slaughter of Jews in Germany a linchpin in bringing hatred against the German people. This is designed to destroy fascism, which the Rothschilds created, and increase the power of political Zionism. This war is also designed to increase the power of communism to the level that it equaled that of united Christdom. The Third World War is to be played out by stirring up hatred of the Muslim world for the purposes of playing the Islamic world and the political Zionists off against one another. Whilst this is going on, the remaining nations would be forced to fight themselves into a state of mental, physical, spiritual and economic exhaustion. On the 15th of August of this year, Albert Pike writes a letter, now catalogued in the British Museum, to Gizep Mazanai in which he states the following. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists and we shall provoke a great social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to all nations the effect of absolute atheism, the origins of savagery, and of most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, the people will be forced to defend themselves against the world minority of the world revolutionaries and will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitudes disillusioned with Christianity whose spirits will be from that moment without direction and leadership and anxious for an ideal but without knowledge where to send its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer brought finally out. Into public view. A manifestation which will result from a general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Pike, who having been elected as sovereign grand commander of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry Southern Jurisdiction in 1859, was the most powerful Freemason in America. 
He would retain that post for 32 years until his death in 1891. He also published a book on the subject in 1872 entitled Morals and Dogma of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, in which he candidly states the following, Lucifer, the Light Bearer. Strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the Son of the Morning. Is it he who bears the light, and with its splendors intolerable blinds feeble, sensual or selfish souls? Doubt it not. 1872. Prior to Gizep Mazanai's death this year, he makes another revolutionary leader named Adrian Lemmy his successor. Lemmy will be subsequently succeeded by Lenin and Trotsky, then by Stalin. The revolutionary activities of all these men are financed by the Rothschilds. 1873, the loss-making Rio Tinto copper mines in Spain are purchased by a group of foreign financiers including the Rothschilds. These mines represented Europe's largest source of copper. 1875, on January 1 of this year Jacob Schiff, now Solomon Loeb's son-in-law after marrying his daughter, Theresa, takes control of the banking house, Kuhn, Loeb and Company. He goes on to finance John D. Rockefeller Standard Oil Company, Edward R. Harriman's Railroad Empire, and Andrew Carnegie Steel Empire. This is all with Rothschild money. He then identifies the other largest bankers in America at that time. They are J.P. Morgan who controls Wall Street and the Drexels and the Battles of Philadelphia. All the other financiers, big and little, dance to the music of those three houses. Schiff then gets the European Rothschilds to set up European branches of these three large banks on the understanding that Schiff, and therefore Rothschild, is to be the boss of banking in New York and therefore America. An M. Rothschild and Sons undertake a share issue to raise capital for the first Channel Tunnel project to link France to England, with half of its capital coming from the Rothschild-owned company Du Chemin de Fer du Nord. This year Lionel de Rothschild also loans Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli the finance for the British government to purchase the shares in the Suez Canal, from Khedive said of Egypt. This was done as the Rothschilds needed this access route to be held by a government they controlled, so they could use that government's military to protect their huge business interests in the Middle East. 1876, Otto von Bismarck states. The division of the United States into two federations of equal force was decided long before the civil war by the high financial power of Europe. These bankers were afraid that the United States, if they remained in one bloc and as one nation, would attain economical and financial independence, which would upset their financial domination over the world. The voice of the Rothschilds predominated. They foresaw the tremendous booty if they could substitute two feeble democracies, indebted to the financiers, to the vigorous republic, confident and self-providing. Therefore they started their emissaries in order to exploit the question of slavery, and thus dig an abyss between the two parts of the republic. 1879, Lionel de Rothschild dies. 1880, Rothschild agents begin fomenting a series of pogroms predominantly in Russia, but also in Poland, Bulgaria and Romania. These pogroms resulted in the slaughter of thousands of innocent Jews, causing approximately 2 million to flee, mainly to New York, but also to Chicago, Philadelphia, Boston, and Los Angeles. The reason these pogroms were initiated was to create a large Jewish base in America, who when they arrived, would be educated to register as Democrat voters. Some 20 years later, this would result in a massive Democratic power base in the United States and be used to elect Rothschild frontmen such as Woodrow Wilson, to the presidency, to carry out the bidding of the Rothschilds. 1881, President James Garfield, the 20th President of the United States who lasted only 100 days, states two weeks before he is assassinated. Whoever controls the volume of money in our country is absolute master of all industry and commerce, and when you realize that the entire system is very easily controlled, one way or another, by a few powerful men at the top, you will not have to be told how periods of inflation and depression originate. Edmund James de Rothschild has a son Maurice de Rothschild. 1883, after 6,000 feet of tunnel in the Channel Tunnel project being excavated, the British government hold the project citing the fact that it would be a threat to Britain's security. 1885, Nathaniel Rothschild, son of Lionel de Rothschild, becomes the first Jewish peer and is takes the title of Lord Rothschild. 1886, the French Rothschild Bank, de Rothschild Frères obtains substantial amounts of Russia's oil fields and forms the Caspian and Black Sea Petroleum Company, which quickly becomes the world's second largest oil producer. 1887, opium trafficker in China, Edward Albert Sassoon, marries Aline Caroline de Rothschild, the granddaughter of Jacob James Meyer Rothschild. Aline Caroline's father, Gustave, together with his brother, Alphonse, took over the Rothschilds' French arm following their father Jacob's death. The Rothschilds financed the amalgamation of the Kimberley Diamond Mines in South Africa. 
They subsequently become the biggest shareholders of this company, De Beers, and mine precious stones in Africa and India. 1888, Noemi Halfen, future wife of Maurice de Rothschild born. 1891, the British Labour leader makes the following statement on the subject of the Rothschilds. This blood-sucking crew has been the cause of untold mischief and misery in Europe during the present century, and has piled up its prodigious wealth chiefly through fermenting wars between states which ought never to have quarrelled. Whenever there is trouble in Europe, wherever rumours of war circulate and men's minds are distraught with fear of change and calamity you may be sure that a hook-nosed Rothschild is at his game somewhere near the region of the disturbance. Comments like this worry the Rothschilds and towards the end of the 1800s they purchase Reuters news agency so they can have some control of the media. 1895, Edmund James de Rothschild the youngest son of Jacob, James, Meyer Rothschild visits Palestine and subsequently supplies the funds to found the first Jewish colonies there, this is to further their long-term objective of creating a Rothschild-owned country. 1897, the Rothschilds found the Zionist Congress to promote Zionism, a political movement with the sole aim of moving all Jews into a singularly Jewish nation-state, and arrange its first meeting in Munich. However due to extreme opposition from local Jews, who are quite happy where they are, this meeting has to be moved to Basel, Switzerland and takes place on the 29th of August. The meeting is chaired by Ashkenazi Jew, Theodore Herz, who would state in his diaries. It is essential that the sufferings of Jews become worse, this will assist in realization of our plans, I have an excellent idea, I shall induce antisemites to liquidate Jewish wealth, the antisemites will assist us thereby in that they will strengthen the persecution and oppression of Jews. The antisemites shall be our best friends. Hers is subsequently elected president of the Zionist organization which adopts the Rothschild red hexagram or sign as the Zionist flag which 51 years later will end up as the flag of Israel. Edward Henry Harriman becomes a director of the Union Pacific Railroad and goes on to take control of the Southern Pacific Railroad. This is all financed by the Rothschilds. 1898, Ferdinand de Rothschild dies. 1901, the Jews from the colonies set up in Palestine by Edmund James de Rothschild send a delegation to him which tell him. If you wish to save the Yishuf, the Jewish settlement, first take your hands from it, and for once permit the colonists to have the possibility of correcting for themselves what needs correcting. Edmund James de Rothschild is very angry about this and states, I created the Yishuf, I alone. Therefore no men, neither colonists nor organizations have the right to interfere in my plans. The Rothschild Banking House in Frankfurt, Germany, M. A. von Rothschild and Son, closes as there is no male Rothschild heir to take it on. 1902, Philippe de Rothschild born. 1905, a group of Rothschild-backed Zionist Jews led by Georgia Polonorvik upon attempt to overthrow the Tsar in Russia in a communist coup. They fail and are forced to flee Russia only to be given refuge in Germany. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 2, p. 497, states. It is a somewhat curious sequel to the attempt to set up a Catholic competitor to the Rothschilds that at the present time the latter are the guardians of the papal treasure. 1906, the Rothschilds claim that due to growing instability in the region and increasing competition from Rockefeller, the Rockefeller family are Rothschild descendants through a female bloodline, owned Standard Oil, this is why they sell their Caspian and Black Sea Petroleum Company to Royal Dutch and Shell. This is another example of the Rothschilds trying to hide their true wealth. 1907, Rothschild, Jacob Schiff, the head of Kuhn, Loeb and Company, in a speech to the New York Chamber of Commerce, warns that Unless we have a central bank with adequate control of credit resources, this country is going to undergo the most severe and far-reaching money panic in its history. Suddenly America finds itself in the middle of another typical run-of-the-mill Rothschild-engineered financial crisis, which ruins as usual ruins the lives of millions of innocent people throughout America and makes billions for the Rothschilds. 1909, Jacob Schiff founds the National Advancement for the Association of the Colored People, NAACP. This was done to incite black people into writing, looting, and other forms of disorder, in order to cause a rift between the black and white communities. Jewish historian, Howard Sachar, states the following in his book, A History of the Jews in America. In 1914, Professor Emeritus Joel Spingen of Columbia University became chairman of the NAACP and recruited for its board such Jewish leaders as Jacob Schiff, Jacob Billerkopf, and Rabbi Stephen Weiss. Other Ashkenazi Jew co-founders included Julius Rosenthal, Lillian Wald and Rabbi Emil G. Hirsch. It was not until 1920 that the NAACP appointed its first black president, James Walden Johnson. Maurice de Rothschild marries Ashkenazi Jew, Noemi Halfen. 
1911, Werner Sombart, in his book, The Jews and Modern Capitalism, stated that from 1820 on, it was the age of the Rothschild, and concluded that there was only one power in Europe, and that is Rothschild. 1912, in the December issue of Truth magazine, George R. Conroe states of banker Jacob Schiff, Mr. Schiff is head of the great private banking house of Kuhn, Loeb, and Co., which represents the Rothschild's interests on this side of the Atlantic. He has been described as financial strategist and has been for years the financial minister of the great impersonal power known as Standard Oil. He was hand in glove with the Harrimans, the Goulds, and the Rockefellers in all their railroad enterprises and has become the dominant power in the railroad and financial power of America. 1913, on March 4, Woodrow Wilson is elected the 28th President of the United States. Shortly after he is inaugurated, he is visited in the White House by Ashkenazi Jew, Samuel Untermeyer, of law firm, Guggenheim, Untermeyer, and Marshall, who tries to blackmail him for the sum of $40,000 in relation to an affair Wilson had whilst he was a professor at Princeton University, with a fellow professor's wife. President Wilson does not have the money, so Untermeyer volunteers to pay the $40,000 out of his own pocket to the woman Wilson had had the affair with, on the condition that Wilson promised to appoint to the first vacancy on the United States Supreme Court a nominee to be recommended to President Wilson by Untermeyer. Wilson agrees to this. Jacob Schiff sets up the Anti-Defamation League, ADL, in the United States. This organization is formed to slander anyone who questions or challenges the Rothschild global conspiracy as anti-Semitic. Strangely enough, the same year that they do this they also set up their last and current central bank in America, the Federal Reserve. Congressman Charles Lindbergh stated following the passing of the Federal Reserve Act on the 23rd of December. The act establishes the most gigantic trust on earth. When the president signs this bill, the invisible government of the monetary power will be legalized, the greatest crime of the ages is perpetrated by this banking and currency bill. It is important to note that the Federal Reserve is a private company, it is neither federal nor does it have any reserve. It is conservatively estimated that profits exceed $150 billion per year and the Federal Reserve has never once in its history published accounts. 1914, the start of World War I. In this war, the German Rothschilds loan money to the Germans, the British Rothschilds loan money to the British, and the French Rothschilds loan money to the French. Furthermore, the Rothschilds have control of the three European news agencies, Wolf, estimated 1849, in Germany, Reuters, estimated 1851, in England, and Havis, estimated 1835, in France. The Rothschilds use Wolf to manipulate the German people into a fervor for war. From around this time, the Rothschilds are rarely reported in the media, because they own the media. 1916, on June the 4th, Ashkenazi Jew, Louis Dembitz Brandeis is appointed to the Supreme Court of the United States by President Wilson as per his agreed blackmail payment to Samuel Untermeyer some three years earlier. Justice Brandeis is also the elected leader of the Executive Committee for Zionist Affairs, a position he has held since 1914. The Middle of World War II Germany were winning the war as they were being financed by the Rothschilds to a greater extent than France, Italy and England, because Rothschilds did not want to support the Tsar in Russia, and of course Russia was on the same side as France, Italy and England. Then a significant event occurred. Germany, although they were winning the war and not one foreign soldier had set foot on their soil, offered armistice to Britain with no requirement of reparations. The Rothschilds were anxious to make sure this didn't happen as they were expecting to make far more money off this war, so they played another card they had up their sleeve. Whilst the British were considering Germany's offer, Rothschild agent Louis Brandeis sends a Zionist delegation from America to Britain to promise to bring America into the war on the side of the British, provided the British agree to give the land of Palestine to the Rothschilds. The Rothschilds wanted Palestine for the following reason. They had great business interests in the Far East and desired their own state in that area along with their own military which they could use as an aggressor to any state that threatened those interests. The British subsequently agree to the deal for Palestine and the Zionists in London contact their counterparts in America and inform them of this fact. Suddenly all the major newspapers in America that up to that point had been pro-German turned on Germany running propaganda pieces such as, German soldiers were killing Red Cross nurses, German soldiers were cutting off babies' hands, etc., in order to manipulate the American public against the Germans. This same year, President Woodrow Wilson ran a re-election campaign under the slogan, Re-elect the man who will keep your sons out of the war. On the 12th of December, Germany and her allies offer peace terms to end the war. 
1917, as a result of Germany's offer of peace the Rothschild war machine goes into overdrive in America, spreading propaganda which leads to President Wilson under the instructions of American Zionist leader and Supreme Court Justice, Louis Dembitz Brandeis, reneging on his promise to the electorate and taking America into the First World War on April 6. As per the Rothschild Zionist promise to the British to take America into the war, they decide they want something in writing from the British to prove that they will uphold their side of the bargain. The British Foreign Secretary, Arthur James Balfour therefore drafts a letter which is commonly known as the Balfour Declaration, which is reprinted below. Foreign Office The 2nd of November 1917 Dear Lord Rothschild I have much pleasure in conveying to you, on behalf of His Majesty's Government, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations which has been submitted to, and approved by, the Cabinet. His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. Yours sincerely. Arthur James Balfour the Rothschilds order the execution by the Bolsheviks they control, of Tsar Nicholas II and his entire family in Russia, even though the Tsar had already abdicated on March 2. This is both to get control of the country and an act of revenge for Tsar Alexander I blocking their world government plan in 1815 at the Congress of Vienna, and Tsar Alexander II siding with President Abraham Lincoln in 1864. It is extremely important for them to slaughter the entire family including women and children in order to make good on the promise to do so made by Nathan Meyer Rothschild in 1815. It is designed to show the world what happens if you ever attempt to cross the Rothschilds. U.S. Congressman Oscar Calloway informs Congress that J.P. Morgan is a Rothschild front and has taken control of the American media industry. He states. In March, 1915, the J.P. Morgan interests, the steel, shipbuilding, and powder interest, and their subsidiary organizations, got together 12 men high up in the newspaper world and employed them to select the most influential newspapers in the United States and sufficient number of them to control generally the policy of the daily press. They found it was only necessary to purchase the control of 25 of the greatest papers, an agreement was reached. The policy of the papers was bought, to be paid for by the month, an editor was furnished for each paper to properly supervise and edit information regarding the questions of preparedness, militarism, financial policies, and other things of national and international nature considered vital to the interests of the purchasers. 1919, in January, Ashkenazi Jews, Karl Leibnacht and Rosa Luckenberg, are killed as they attempt to lead another Rothschild-funded communist coup, this time in Berlin, Germany. The Versailles Peace Conference is held to decide reparations that the Germans need to pay to the victors following the end of the First World War. A delegation of 117 Zionists headed up by Ashkenazi Jew, Bernard Barak, bring up the subject of the promise of Palestine for them. At this point the Germans realized why America had turned on them and under whose influence, the Rothschilds. The Germans, naturally, felt they had been betrayed by the Zionists. This is because, at the time the Rothschilds made their deal with Britain for Palestine, in exchange for bringing America into the war, Germany was the most friendly country in the world towards the Jews, indeed the German Emancipation Edict of 1822 guaranteed Jews in Germany all civil rights enjoyed by Germans. Also, Germany was the only country in Europe which did not place restrictions on Jews, even giving them refuge when they had to flee from Russia after their first attempted communist coup failed there in 1905. Nevertheless, the Rothschilds had held up their side of the bargain to spill the blood of millions of innocents, and as a result, Palestine is confirmed as a Jewish homeland, and whilst its handover to the Rothschilds takes place it is to remain under the control of Britain as the Rothschilds control Britain. At that time less than 1% of the population of Palestine was Jewish. Interestingly, the host of the Versailles Peace Conference is its boss, Baron Edmund de Rothschild. The Versailles Peace Conference is also used as an attempt by the Rothschilds to set up a world government under the pretext of ending all wars, which they create. This was called the League of Nations. Fortunately not enough countries accepted it and so it soon died. On the 29th of March the Times of London reports on the Bolsheviks in Russia. One of the curious features of the Bolshevist movement is the high percentage of non-Russian elements among its leaders. Of the 20 or 30 commissaries, or leaders, who provide the central machinery of the Bolshevist movement, not less than 75% were Jews. It is reported that the Rothschilds were angry with the Russians because they were not prepared to allow them to form a central bank within their nation. 
They therefore gathered groups of Jewish spies and sent them into Russia to drum up a revolution for the benefit of the common man, which was actually a takeover of Russia by a Rothschild-controlled satanic elite. These Jewish spies were, in age-old deceptive Ashkenazi tradition, given Russian names, for example Trotsky was a member of the first group, and his original name was Burstein. These groups were sent to areas throughout Russia to incite riots and rebellion. The Jewish Post International Edition, week ending 24 January 1991, confirms Vladimir Lenin was Jewish. Lenin is also on record as having stated. The establishment of a central bank is 90% of communizing a nation. These Jewish, Rothschild-funded Bolsheviks would go on in the course of history to slaughter 60 million Christians and non-Jews in Soviet-controlled territory. Indeed the author Alexand Solhanitsyn in his work, Gulag Archipelago, Vol. 2, affirms that Zionist Jews created and administered the organized Soviet concentration camp system in which these tens of millions of Christians and non-Jews died. On page 79 of this book he even names the administrators of this the greatest killing machine in the history of the world. They are Aaron Saltz, Yerkov Rappaport, Laza Kogan, Matvir Berman, John Ricky Goder, and Naftali Frenkel. All six are Zionist Jews. In 1970 Solhanitsyn would be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for Literature. N. M. Rothschild and Sons are given a permanent role to fix the world's daily gold price. This takes place in the City of London offices, daily at 1,100 hours, in the same room until 2004. 1920, Winston Churchill, whose mother, Jenny, Jacobson, Jerome, was Jewish meaning he is Jewish under Ashkenazi law as he was born of a Jewish mother, writes in an article in the Illustrated Sunday Herald, dated the 8th of February. From the days of Illuminati leader Weishaupt, to those of Karl Marx, to those of Trotsky, this worldwide conspiracy has been steadily growing. And now at last this band of extraordinary personalities from the underworld of the great cities of Europe and America have gripped the Russian people by the hair of their heads and become the undisputed masters of that enormous empire. 1921, under the orders of Jacob Schiff the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR, is founded by Ashkenazi Jews, Bernard Barak and Colonel Edward Mandelhaus. Schiff gave his orders prior to his death in 1920, as he knew an organization in America needed to be set up to select politicians to carry on the Rothschild conspiracy, and the formation of the CFR was actually agreed in a meeting on 30 May 1919 at the Hotel Majestic in Paris, France. The CFR membership at the start was approximately 1,000 people in the United States. This membership included the heads of virtually every industrial empire in America, all the American-based international bankers, and the heads of all their tax-free foundations. In essence all those people who would provide the capital required for anyone who wished to run for Congress, the Senate or the Presidency. The first job of the CFR was to gain control of the press. This task was given to John D. Rockefeller who set up a number of national news magazines such as Life and Time. He financed Samuel Newhouse to buy up and establish a chain of newspapers all across the country, and Eugene Mayer also who would go on to buy up many publications such as the Washington Post, Newsweek, and the Weekly Magazine. The CFR also needed to gain control of radio, television, and the motion picture industry. This task was split amongst the international bankers from Kuhn Loeb, Goldman Sachs, the Warburgs, and the Learmans. 1925, this year's Jewish Encyclopedia, states of the existence of Ashkenazi Jews, who represent approximately 90% of so-called world Jewry, with the startling admission that the so-called enemy of the Jews, Esau, also known as Adam, see Genesis 36, 1, now actually represents the Jewish race, when on page 42 of volume V it is stated. Adam is in modern Jewry. So what they are basically saying is that these Ashkenazi Jews, who represent 90% of the so-called Jewish population, are actually Gentiles or Goyim themselves. 1926 N. M. Rothschild and Sons refinance the Underground Electric Railways Company of London Limited which has a controlling interest in the entire London underground transport system. Maurice de Rothschild has a son, Edmund de Rothschild. 1929 The Rothschilds crash the United States economy by contracting the money supply. 1930, the first Rothschild World Bank, the Bank for International Settlements, this, Commer, is established in Basel, Switzerland. The same place as where 33 years earlier the first ever World Zionist Congress was held. 1933, on 30 January, Adolf Hitler becomes Chancellor of Germany. He drives Jews, many of which were communist out of governmental positions within Germany. As a result of this, in July, the Jews hold a world conference in Amsterdam during which they demand that Hitler reinstate every Jew back to his former position. 
Hitler refuses and as a result of this, Samuel Untermeyer, the Ashkenazi Jew who blackmailed President Wilson, and is now the head of the American delegation and the president of the whole conference, returns to the United States and makes a speech on radio which was transcribed in the From the New York Times, Monday, 7 August 1933. In the speech he made the following statements. The Jews are the aristocrats of the world, our campaign is the economic boycott against all German goods, shipping and services, what we are proposing is to prosecute a purely defensive economic boycott that will undermine the Hitler regime and bring the German people to their senses by destroying their export trade on which their very existence depends. Each of you, Jew and Gentile alike, must refuse to deal with any merchant or shopkeeper who sells any German-made goods or who patronizes German ships or shipping. As two-thirds of Germany's food supply had to be imported, and could only be imported with the proceeds of what they exported, if Germany could not export, two-thirds of Germany's population would starve, as there would be not enough food for more than one-third of the population. As a result of this boycott, Jews throughout America would protest outside and damage any stores in which they found any products with, made in Germany, printed on them, causing stores to have to dump these products or risk bankruptcy. Once the effects of this boycott began to be felt in Germany, the Germans, who had demonstrated no violence towards the Jews up to this point, simply began boycotting Jewish stores in the same way the Jews had done to stores selling German products in America. Rothschild financed IBM, supply machines to the Nazis which produce punch cards to help organize and manage the initial identification and social expulsion of Jews, the confiscation of their property, and their extermination. On 16 November, President Roosevelt recognizes the Zionist regime of Stalin in Russia without consultation with Congress even as 8,000 Ukrainians march in protest in New York. Also this year, President Roosevelt, born of a Jewish mother, therefore satisfying Ashkenazi rules of being Jewish, orders the all-seeing eye to be placed upon all new dollar bills along with the motto, Novus Ordo Seclarum. This is Latin for, a new order of the ages. 1934, Swiss banking secrecy laws are reformed and it becomes an offence resulting in imprisonment for any bank employee to violate bank secrecy. This is all in preparation for the Rothschild-engineered Second World War in which as usual they will fund both sides. Edmund de Rothschild dies. 1936, with regard to the increase in antisemitism in Germany, Samuel Landmann, at the time, secretary to the World Zionist Organization, in his 1936 book, Great Britain, the Jews, and Palestine states the following of the United States' entry into World War I. The fact that it was Jewish help that brought USA into the war on the side of the Allies has rankled ever since in German especially Nazi minds, and has contributed in no small measure to the prominence which antisemitism occupies in the Nazi program. 1938, on 7 November, a Jew, Herschel Grinspan, assassinated Ernst von Rath, a minor official at the German embassy in Paris. As a result of this German hostility towards Jews in Germany started to turn violent. The Rothschild's Austrian banking house in Vienna, S.M., von Rothschild & Son, closes following the Nazi occupation of Austria. 1939, I.G. Farben the leading producer of chemicals in the world and largest German producer of steel dramatically increases its production. This increased production is almost exclusively used to arm Germany for the Second World War. This company was controlled by the Rothschilds and would go on to use Jews and other disaffected peoples as slave labor in the concentration camps. IG Farben also created the lethal Zyklin B gas that was used to exterminate the Jews. On the 1st of September, the Second World War starts when Germany invades Poland. This was because the German leadership were a Christian leadership, who understood that Soviet Russia was led by Rothschild-funded communists, and they feared that as the Soviet Union grew in strength, these Jewish communists would invade and wipe all the Christians off the map. 1940, Hans Jern Kohler in his book, Inside the Gestapo, states the following, of Maria Anna Schickelgruber, Adolf Hitler's grandmother. A little servant girl came to Vienna and became a domestic servant at the Rothschild mansion, and Hitler's unknown grandfather must be probably looked for in this magnificent house. This is backed up by Walter Langer in his book, The Mind of Hitler, in which he states, Adolf's father, Aloy Hitler, was the illegitimate son of Maria Anna Stickelgruber. Maria Anna Stickelgruber was living in Vienna at the time she conceived. At that time she was employed as a servant in the home of Baron Rothschild. As soon as the family discovered her pregnancy she was sent back home, where Aloy was born. On the surface, it would appear Hitler was unlikely to be a Rothschild, but then again, when you discover the benefits that the Rothschilds got out of this war, both financially and politically, a Rothschild connection does not appear as outlandish as it may initially seem. 1941, President Roosevelt takes America into the Second World War by refusing to sell Japan any more steel scrap or oil. 
Japan was in the midst of a war against China, and without that scrap steel and oil, Japan would be unable to continue that war. Japan was totally dependent upon the United States for both steel scrap and oil. Roosevelt knew this action would provoke the Japanese to attack America, which they subsequently did at Pearl Harbor. 1942, Prescott Bush, father of future American presidents George Herbert Walker and George W., has his company seized under the Trading with the Enemy Act. He was funding Hitler from America, whilst American soldiers were being killed by German soldiers. Jews are also being slaughtered by these same soldiers. Interestingly the ADL never criticizes any of the Bushes for this. 1943, the 18th of February, Zionist, Isaac Greenbaum, head of the Jewish Agency Rescue Committee, in a speech to the Zionist Executive Council states. If I am asked, could you give from the UJA, United Jewish Appeal, monies to rescue Jews, I say, no and I say again no. He would go on to state, one cow in Palestine is worth more than all the Jews in Poland. This is not a surprise, the whole idea of Zionist support for the slaughter of innocent Jews was to scare the survivors into believing that their only place of safety was Israel. How else do you think the Zionists could ensure Jews leave the beautiful European cities in which they live, in order to settle in a desert? 1944, on the 6th of November Lord Moyne, British minister resident in the Middle East was assassinated in Cairo by two members of the Jewish terrorist group, the Stern Gang, led by future Prime Minister of Israel, Yitzhak Shamir. He is also responsible for an assassination attempt against Harold MacMichael, the High Commissioner of the British Mandate of Palestine, the same year. Interestingly he also masterminds another successful assassination this year against the United Nations representative in the Middle East, Count Folk Bernadot who, although he had secured the release of 21,000 prisoners from German camps during World War II, was seen by Yitzhak Shamir and his terrorist collaborators as an anti-Zionist. In Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, two further Rothschild World Banks are created. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank. 1945, the end of the Second World War. It is reported that IG. Farben plans were specifically not targeted in the bombing raids on Germany. Interestingly at the end of the war, they were found to have only sustained 15% damage. The tribunals held at the end of the Second World War, to investigate Nazi war crimes, censored any materials recording Western assistance to Hitler. The Rothschilds take a giant step towards their goal of world domination when the second, League of Nations, called the, United Nations, was approved this year. 1946, on the 22nd of July the future Prime Minister of Israel, Ashkenazi Jew, David Ben-Gurion, orders another future Prime Minister of Israel, Ashkenazi Jew, Menachem Begin, to carry out a terrorist attack on the King David Hotel in Palestine, to try and drive out the British. As a result of this 91 people were killed, most of them civilians, 28 British, 41 Arabs, 17 Jews, and 5 others. Around 45 people are injured. Menachem Begin went on to proudly proclaim himself as, the father of modern terrorism. Just to put the gravity of the attack on the King David Hotel into perspective, it was at the time the biggest death toll as a result of single terrorist action ever and was only surpassed over 40 years later by the bombing of Panam Flight 103 over Lockerbie. 1947, the British who prior to World War II declared that there would be no more immigration of Jews to Palestine in order to protect the Palestinians from their acts of terror against both them and British soldiers, transfer control of Palestine to the United Nations. The United Nations resolved to have Palestine partitioned into two states, one Zionist and one Arab, with Jerusalem to remain as an international zone to be enjoyed by all religious faiths. This transfer was scheduled to take place on 15 May 1948. The United Nations had no right to give Arab property to anyone, as indeed even thought the Jews owned 6% of Palestine, at that time, Resolution 181 granted the Jews 57% of the land leaving the Arabs who at that time had 94% with only 43%. Information collected by the ADL in its spy operations on US citizens is used by the House Select Committee on Un-American Activities. Subcommittee Chair Claire Hoffman dismisses the ADL's reports on suspected communists as hearsay. 1948, in the spring of this year, the Rothschilds bribe President Harry S. Truman, 33rd President of the United States 1945-1953, to recognize Israel, Rothschild-owned Zionist not Jewish territory, as a sovereign state with $2 million which they give to him on his campaign train. They then declare Israel to be a sovereign Jewish state in Palestine, and within half an hour President Truman declared the United States to be the first foreign nation to recognize it. The flag of Israel is unveiled. Despite tremendous opposition the emblem on the flag is a blue-colored version of the Rothschild, red hexagram or sign. 
This angers many Jews who realize this hexagram was used in the ancient mystery religions as the symbol of Moloch, described as a demon of unwilling sacrifice and is also interestingly the name of the stone of the elite worship at Bohemian Grove, and Astaroth, described as the Lord Treasurer of Hell. The hexagram was also used to represent Saturn, which has been identified as the esoteric name for Satan. This indicates that anyone killed in the name of Israel is actually a sacrifice to Satan. These dissenting Jews believe the menorah, the oldest Jewish symbol should be used and pointed out that the hexagram is not even a Jewish symbol, but of course as the Rothschild Zionists use it that is what ends up on the Rothschild, I mean Zionist, I mean Israeli flag. In the early hours of the 19th of April, 132 Jewish terrorists from the Irgun Gang, led by future Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin, and the Stern Gang, led by future Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir, brutally massacre 200 men, women and children as they are sleeping peacefully in the Arab village of Duyasin. Following the United Nations transfer of Palestine to an independent Jewish state and an independent Arab state on the 15th of May, the Israelis launched a military assault on the Arabs with blaring loudspeakers on their trucks informing the Arabs that if they did not flee immediately, they would be slaughtered. 800,000 Arabs with the recent memory of the Duyasin massacre at the forefront of their minds fled in panic. They asked for help from neighboring Arab states, but those states did not get involved as they were no match for the Israelis whose up-to-date military hardware had been supplied by the Jewish Stalinist regime in Russia. Following this assault, the Jews now controlled 78% of the former Palestine as opposed to the 57% that had been given to them illegally by the United Nations. The Palestinians, many of them Christians, were never paid compensation for their homes, property and businesses stolen from them during this illegal Jewish assault, and these people ended up in slum refugee cities of tents. Few of them or at least half of the Palestinians in their hurry to flee, left their birth certificates behind. The State of Israel then passed a law that only those who could prove citizenship were allowed to return to Israel, thus meaning these 400,000 Palestinians could not return and lost all their property they had left there. Ashkenazi Jew, David Ben-Gurion, one of the father founders of Israel and its first prime minister, candidly describes Zionist aims in his diary, the 21st of May 1948, as follows. The Achilles heel of the Arab coalition is the Lebanon. Muslim supremacy in this country is artificial and can easily be overthrown. A Christian state ought to be set up there, with its southern frontier on the river Litany. We would sign a treaty of alliance with this state. Thus when we have broken the strength of the Arab Legion and bombed Amman, we could wipe out Transjordan, after that Syria would fall. And if Egypt still dared to make war on us, we would bomb Port Said, Alexandria and Cairo. We should thus end the war and would have but paid to Egypt, Assyria and Chaldea on behalf of our ancestors. 1949, on October 1, Mao Tse Tsung declares the founding of the People's Republic of China in Tiananmen Square, Beijing. He is funded by Rothschild created communism in Russia and also the following Rothschild agents, Solomon Adler, a former United States Treasury official who was a Soviet spy, Israel Epstein, the son of a Jewish Bolshevik imprisoned by the Tsar in Russia for trying to form into revolution there, and Frank Ho, a leading official of the Rothschild-owned IMF. 1950, Israel passes their law of return, guaranteeing every Jew worldwide the right to dwell in the state of Israel, however the Palestinians even though they had lived there for 1,300 years, were denied that right. John David, former chief of the Justice Department's Internal Security Section notes that the Israeli intelligence service is the second most active in the United States after the Soviets, and of course both Israel and the Soviet Union are run by an Ashkenazi Jewish leadership. 1951, on the 1st of April the Israeli secret intelligence agency the Mossad, which will go on to terrorize the world, is formed. The motto of the Mossad is probably the most disgusting secret service motto in the world, it is. By way of deception, thou shalt do war. 1953, N.M., Rothschild and Sons found the British Newfoundland Corporation Limited to develop 60,000 square miles of land in Newfoundland, Canada, which comprised a power station to harness the power of the Hamilton, later renamed Churchill, Falls. At the time this was the largest construction project ever to be undertaken by a private company. 1954, The Levon Affair. Israeli agents recruit Egyptian citizens of Jewish descent to bomb Western targets in Egypt and plant evidence to frame Arabs in an apparent attempt to upset American forward-slash-Egyptian relations. Israeli Defense Minister, Ashkenazi Jew, Pinners Levon is eventually removed from office, though many think real responsibility lay with David Ben-Gurion. A hidden microphone planted by the Israelis is discovered in the office of the U.S. Ambassador in Tel Aviv. 1955, Edmund de Rothschild founds Company Financière, Paris. 
1956, telephone taps are found connected to two telephones in the residence of the U.S. military attaché in Tel Aviv. 1957, James de Rothschild dies and it is reported, by the Rothschild-owned media, that he bequeaths a large sum of money to the State of Israel to pay for the construction of their parliament building, the Nasit. He states that the Nasit should be a symbol, in the eyes of all men, of the permanence of the State of Israel. On page 219 of his book, Tales of the British Aristocracy, L. G. Pine, the editor of Burke's Peerage, states that the Jews have made themselves so closely connected with the British peerage that the two classes are unlikely to suffer loss which is not mutual. So closely linked are the Jews and the lords that a blow against the Jews in this country would not be possible without injuring the aristocracy also. Maurice de Rothschild dies in Paris. 1962, de Rothschild Frères establishes a metal as an umbrella company for all their mineral mining interests. Frederick Morton publishes his book, The Rothschilds, in which he states. Though they control scores of industrial, commercial, mining and tourist corporations, not one bears the name Rothschild. Being private partnerships, the family houses never need to, and never do, publish a single public balance sheet, or any other report of their financial condition. This attitude reveals the true aim of the Rothschilds, to eliminate all competition and create their own worldwide monopoly. 1963, on the 4th of June President John F. Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States 1961-1963 signs Executive Order 11110 which returned to the U.S. government the power to issue currency, without going through the Rothschilds owned Federal Reserve. Less than six months later on the 22nd of November, President Kennedy is assassinated by the Rothschilds for the same reason as they assassinated President Abraham Lincoln in 1865, he wanted to print American money for the American people, as opposed to for the benefit of a money-grabbing warmongering foreign elite. This executive order 11110 is rescinded by President Lyndon Baines Johnson, the 36th President of the United States 1963 to 1969, on Air Force One from Dallas to Washington, the same day as President Kennedy was assassinated. Another, and probably the primary, reason for Kennedy's assassination is however, the fact that he made it quite clear to Israeli Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, that under no circumstances would he agree to Israel becoming a nuclear state. The Israeli newspaper Hararetz on February 5, 1999, in a review of, of Nir Cohen's book, Israel and the Bomb, states the following. The murder of American President John F. Kennedy brought to an abrupt end the massive pressure being applied by the U.S. administration on the government of Israel to discontinue the nuclear program, the book implied that, had Kennedy remained alive, it is doubtful whether Israel would today have a nuclear option. Edmund de Rothschild establishes Lar Company Financier Edmund de Rothschild, LCF, in Switzerland as a venture capital house. This later develops into an investment bank and asset management company with many affiliates. He also marries his wife Nadine, and they have a son, Benjamin de Rothschild. 1965, Israel illegally obtains enriched uranium from Numec, Nuclear Materials and Equipment Corporation. 1967, the treatment of the Palestinians by the Zionist Jews finally ignites enough anger in the Arab world for Egypt, Jordan and Syria to mobilize on Israel's borders. All of these three countries are suddenly attacked by Israel and as a result the Sinai which included Gaza was stolen from Egypt and the West Bank and the Jordan River stolen from Jordan. As a result of this, on June the 8th, the Israelis launch an attack on the USS Liberty with Israeli aircraft and motor torpedo boats, in an effort to blame it on Egypt, to bring America into the war on their side, and of course follow to the letter, their Mossad motto. By way of deception, thou shalt do war. As a result of their attack, 34 American servicemen were killed and 174 wounded. Israel lies as usual, claiming it mistook this warship that was flying a large United States flag for an ancient out-of-service Egyptian horse carrier al Qasr that was 180 feet shorter. They also claim the ship was in the war zone when it was actually in international waters, far from any fighting. The Israelis' attack on this warship lasts for 75 minutes during which time they shoot up one of the United States flags, resulting in the sailors desperately raising another one. In the aftermath of this attack, the American sailors who survived are warned by the United States military not to discuss the matter with anyone due to national security. This story gets no prominence in the Rothschild-controlled mainstream media and as usual Israel is in no way even rebuked for their crimes by their subservient country of America. The following day, the 9th of June, Israel illegally occupies the Golan Heights which it seizes from Syria. This area goes on to provide Israel with one third of its fresh water. Israeli General Matichir Upalate is quoted in Hararetz, the 19th of March 1972, with the following statement. 
the thesis that the danger of genocide was hanging over us in June 1967, and that Israel was fighting for its physical existence is only bluff, which was born and developed after the war. Another sickening and deceptive statement, but again at least his consistent with the Mossad motto, by way of deception, thou shalt do war. De Rothschild Frears is renamed Bank Rothschild. 1968, Noemi Halfen, wife of Maurice de Rothschild dies. 1970, while working for Senator Henry, Scoop, Jackson, Ashkenazi Jew, Richard Powell is caught by the FBI giving classified information to Israel. Nothing is done. British Prime Minister Edward Heath makes Lord Victor Rothschild the head of his policy unit. Whilst he is in that role Britain enters the European community. 1973, in his book, None Dare Call It Conspiracy, Gary Allen states. One major reason for the historical blackout on the role of the international bankers in political history is the Rothschilds were Jewish. The Jewish members of the conspiracy have used an organization called the Anti-Defamation League, ADL, as an instrument to try and convince everyone that any mention of the Rothschilds and their allies is an attack on all Jews. In this way they have stifled almost all honest scholarship on international bankers and made the subject taboo within universities. Any individual or book exploring this subject is immediately attacked by hundreds of ADL communities all over the country. The ADL has never let the truth or logic interfere with its highly professional smear jobs. Actually, nobody has a right to be more angry at the Rothschild clique than their fellow Jews. The Rothschild Empire helped finance Adolf Hitler. George J. Lara, an employee of the Rothschilds controlled IBM, invents the UPC, Universal Product Code, barcode which will eventually be placed upon every item traded worldwide and bear the number, 666. The Book of Revelation, Chapter 13, Verse 17 through 18, states the following in relation to this number, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. The whole satanic aims of the Rothschilds are now in full view of the world, everything bought or sold carries the mark of the beast, 666. N. M. Rothschild and Sons British Newfoundland Corporation, Churchill Falls Project in Newfoundland, Canada, is completed. N. M. Rothschild and Sons also create a new asset management part of the company which traded worldwide. This eventually became Rothschild Private Management Limited. Edmund de Rothschild, a great-grandson of Jacob, James, Meyer Rothschild, bought the Crew Bourgeois estate of Chateau Clark in Bordeaux. 1976, Ashkenazi Jew, Harold Rosenthal, aide to Ashkenazi Jew, Senator Jacob Harvitz, states. Most Jews do not like to admit it, but our God is Lucifer. 1978, Ashkenazi Jew, Stephen Bryan, then a Senate Foreign Relations Committee staffer, is overheard in a Washington, D.C. hotel offering confidential documents to top Israeli military officials. Bryan obtains a lawyer, Nathan Lewin, and the case heads for the grand jury, but is mysteriously dropped. Brian later goes to work for Richard Powell. 1979, the Egyptian-Israeli peace treaty in 1979 was underwritten by United States aid which pledged $3 billion annually to Israel from the United States taxpayer, not even a drop in the ocean when you consider the amount they make off the Federal Reserve. Shin Bet, the Israeli Internal Security Agency, tries to penetrate the U.S. Consulate General in Jerusalem through a honey trap, using a clerical employee who was having an affair with a Jerusalem girl. Baron and Baroness Philippi de Rothschild in a joint venture with Robert Mondavi, begin the construction of a pyramid in Napa Valley, California, where the leader forward slash founder of the Church of Satan, Ashkenazi Jew, Anton Levy, was based. This is known as Opus 1, which means, the first work, and the front for this temple is that it is a winery. 1980, the global phenomenon of privatization starts. The Rothschilds are behind this from the very beginning in order to seize control of all publicly owned assets worldwide. 1981, Bank Rothschild is nationalized by the French government. The new bank is called, Compagnie Européenne de Bank. The Rothschilds subsequently set up a successor to this French bank, Rothschild and C Bank, RCB, which goes on to become a leading French investment house. 1982, from the 16th of September to 18, future Prime Minister of Israel and then Defense Minister, Ashkenazi Jew, Ariel Sharon, orchestrates Israel's invasion of Lebanon, which provided aerial lighting in order to facilitate the killing of between 1,000 and 2,000 men, women and children in the Sabra and Shatila massacres. 1985, Eustace Mullis Publishers, who owns the TV networks, in which he reveals the Rothschilds have control of all three major U.S. Networks, which are NBC, CBS, and ABC. 
The New York Times reports the FBI is aware of at least a dozen incidents in which American officials transferred classified information to the Israelis, quoting former assistant director of the FBI. Raymond Wannell. The Justice Department does not prosecute. Richard Smith, the owner of Milko, is indicted on charges of smuggling nuclear timing devices to Israel. N.M. Rothschild and Sons advise the British government on the privatization of British gas. They subsequently advise the British government on virtually all of their other privatizations of state-owned assets including British Steel, British Coal, all the British Regional Electricity Boards, and all the British Regional Water Boards. A British MP heavily involved in these privatizations is future Chancellor of the Exchequer, Norman Lamont, a former Rothschild banker. 1986, Mordechai Vanunu, a technician at Demoner, Israel's nuclear installation, from 1976 to 1985, discovers that the plant was secretly producing nuclear weapons. His conscience made him speak out, and in 1986 he provided the London Sunday Times with the facts and photos they used to tell the world about Israel's nuclear weapons program. His evidence showed that Israel had stockpiled up to 200 nuclear warheads, with no debate or authorization from its own citizens. On 30 September 1986, Vanunu was lured from London to Rome. There he was kidnapped, drugged and shipped to Israel. After a secret trial he was sentenced to 18 years for treason and espionage, something Israel are very familiar with though he had received no payment and had communicated with no foreign power. He goes on to be held in complete isolation for 11 years, only allowed occasional visits from his family, lawyer and a priest, conducted through a metal screen. Although he completes his sentence, the Israeli government continues to hold him against his will. 1987, Edmund de Rothschild creates the World Conservation Bank which is designed to transfer debts from third world countries to this bank, and in return those countries would give land to this bank. This is designed so the Rothschilds can gain control of the third world which represents 30% of the land surface of the earth. On the 24th of April the Wall Street Journal reveals the role of Israel in Iran-Contra scandal won't be explored in detail by panels. 1988, the ADL initiate a nationwide competition for law students to draft anti-hate legislation for minority groups. That competition is won by a man named Joseph Rybakov, whose thesis proposes that not only must hate-motivated violence be banned, but also any words which stimulate, supicine, friction, hate, and possible violence, these must also be criminalized. This ADL prize-winning paper suggests that not only should state agencies monitor and restrict free speech in general, but they should also censor all films that criticize identifiable groups. Furthermore, even if the person making the statement can justify it, for example Christians criticizing homosexuality because the Bible expressly forbids it, Rybakov asserts that the truth is to be no defense in court. The only proof a court will need in order to secure a conviction of hate speech is that something has been said, and a minority group or member of such group has felt emotionally damaged as a result of such criticism. Therefore, under these proposals which the ADL will have forced into law all over the world less than 15 years later, Jesus Christ would have been arrested as a hate criminal. This law is designed to protect the Rothschild conspiracy from being revealed in that if you criticize the Rothschild's criminal cabal, you will be targeted as anti-Semitic, and thus risk imprisonment. Philippe de Rothschild dies. 1989, many of the satellite states in Eastern Europe, through the influence of Glasnost, become more open in their demands of freedom from communist governance in their republics. Many revolutions happen in 1989, most of them involving the overthrow of their respective communist governments and the replacement of them with republics. Thus, the hold the communists had over Eastern Europe, the Iron Curtain, becomes very weak. Eventually, as a result of perestroika and glasnost, communism collapses, not only in the Soviet Union but also in Eastern Europe. In Russia, Boris Yeltsin, whose wife is the daughter of Joseph Stalin's marriage to Rosa Kiganovic, and the Republican government takes steps to end the power of the Communist Party by suspending and banning the party and seizing all their property. This symbolized the fall of communism in Russia and resulted in the start of a mass exodus of 700,000 Jews from the former Soviet Union to Israel. In the Israeli journal, Hotem, the 24th of November 1989, there is a report of a speech that then Israeli Deputy Foreign Minister, Ashkenazi Jew, Benjamin Netanyahu, gave to students at Bar Island University in which he states. Israel should have exploited the repression of the demonstrations in China, when world attention focused on that country, to carry out mass expulsions among the Arabs of the territories. The London and Paris Rothschilds announced the launch of a new subsidiary, Rothschild GmbH, in Frankfurt, Germany. 1991, following the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait on August 2, 1990, 
On the 16th of January of this year the United States and Britain began an aerial bombing campaign of targets within Iraq. On the 24th of February the grand campaign commenced which was to last 100 hours until on February 28 when a horrendous war crime occurred. This crime was the slaughter of 150,000 Iraqi troops with fuel air bombs. These Iraqis were fleeing on a crowded highway from Kuwait to Basra. President George Herbert Walker Bush ordered United States military aircraft and ground units to kill these surrendering troops, they were then bulldozed into mass and marked graves in the desert, some still alive. President Bush then ordered a cessation of hostilities. What was the significance of this slaughter and President Bush declaring the war over on this day? Well it was the day the, day of Purim, fell on this year. This the day the Jews celebrate their victory over ancient Babylon, now based within the borders of Iraq, and a day when the Jews are encouraged to get bloody revenge against their perceived enemies. At the Baldeberg Conference on June 6-9 of this year, in Baden-Baden, Germany, David Rockefeller, a Rothschild, made the following statement. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the lights of publicity during those years. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. 1992, in March, former Federal Reserve Board Chairman, Paul A. Volcker became chairman of the European banking firm, J. Rothschild, Wolfenzahn and Company. Stephen Bryan, court offering confidential documents to Israel in 1978, is serving on board of the pro-Israeli Jewish Institute for National Security Affairs while continuing as a paid consultant, with security clearance, on exports of sensitive U.S. technology. The Samson Option, by Seymour M. Hirsch reports. Illicitly obtained intelligence was flying so voluminously from Lakem, a secret Israeli intelligence unit, a Hebrew acronym for Scientific Liaison Bureau, into Israeli intelligence that a special code name, Jumbo, was added to the security markings already on the documents. There were strict orders, Ari Ben Menish recalled, anything marked Jumbo was not supposed to be discussed with your American counterparts. The Wall Street Journal reports that Israeli agents apparently tried to steal Recon Optical Inc.'s top-secret airborne spy camera system. On 16 September Britain's pound collapses when currency speculators led by Rothschild agent, Ashkenazi Jew, George Soros, borrow pounds and sell them for Deutsche Marks, in the expectation of being able to repay the loan in devalued currency and to pocket the difference. This results in the British Chancellor of the Exchequer, Norman Lamont, announcing a rise in interest rates of 5% in one day and as a result drives Britain into a recession which lasts many years as large numbers of businesses fail and the housing market crashes. This is right on cue for the Rothschilds, after they had privatized Britain's state-owned assets during the 1980s, driven the share price up, and then collapsed the market so they could buy them up for pennies on the pound, a carbon copy of what Nathan Meyer Rothschild did to the British economy 180 years before, in 1812. It cannot be overstated that the Chancellor of the Exchequer at that time, Norman Lamont, prior to becoming a MP, was a merchant banker with N. M. Rothschild and Sons, who he joined after reading economics at Cambridge. 1993, Norman Lamont leaves the British government to return to N. M. Rothschild and Sons as a director, after his mission to collapse the British economy to profit the Rothschilds is accomplished. Former congressman, Paul Findley publishes his seminal book, Deliberate Deceptions, Facing the Facts About the U.S.-Israeli Relationship. In this book he lists the 65 United Nations member resolutions against Israel from the period 1955 to 1992, and the 30 United States vetoes on Israel's behalf which if not made would have seen Israel have 95 resolutions against them at this point. No matter, even with Israel's puppet the United States helping them terrorize others, the 65 resolutions passed against Israel are more than all the resolutions passed against all other countries combined. Not that Israel cared too much about the views of the United Nations when you consider that less than two weeks after Israel's attack on the USS Liberty, an attack designed to sink the Liberty and blame it on Egypt prompting the USA into a war with Egypt on behalf of Israeli lies, remember the Mossad motto, by way of deception, thou shalt do war, the Israeli foreign minister, Abar Eben, stated of the United Nations. If the General Assembly were to vote by 121 votes to one in favor of Israel, returning to the armistice lines, pre-June 1967 borders, Israel would refuse to comply with the decision, New York Times 19 June 1967. The ADL is caught operating a massive spying operation on critics of Israel, Arab Americans, the San Francisco Labor Council, Ilvu Local 10, 
Oakland Educational Association, NAACP, Irish Northern Aid, International Indian Treaty Council, the Asian Law Caucus and the San Francisco Police. Data collected was sent to Israel and in some cases to South Africa. Pressure from Jewish organizations forces the city to drop the criminal case, but the ADL settles a civil lawsuit for an undisclosed sum of cash. 1995, former atomic energy scientist, Dr. Kitty Little claims the Rothschilds now control 80% of the world's uranium supplies giving them a monopoly over nuclear power. The Defense Investigative Service circulates a memo warning U.S. military contractors that Israel aggressively collects U.S. military and industrial technology. The report stated that Israel obtains information using ethnic targeting, financial aggrandizement, and identification and exploitation of individual frailties of U.S. citizens. 1996, a General Accounting Office report, Defense Industrial Security, Weaknesses in U.S. Security Arrangements with Foreign-Owned Defense Contractors, found that according to intelligence sources, country A, identified by intelligence sources as Israel, Washington Times, 22 February 1996, conducts the most aggressive espionage operation against the United States of any U.S. ally. A PDF file of the report is here, www.gov forward slash archive forward slash 1996 forward slash ns9606 for .pdf. An unformat text version is here, http colon double forward slash fars.org forward slash man forward slash gov forward slash gov 966 for .htm The Jerusalem Post, the 30th of August 1996, quoted the report, classified military information and sensitive military technologies are high priority targets for the intelligence agencies of this country. The report described an espionage operation run by the intelligence organization responsible for collecting scientific and technologic information for Israel paid a U.S. government employee to obtain U.S. classified military intelligence documents. The Washington Report on Middle East Affairs, Sean L. Twing, April 1996, noted that this was a reference to the 1985 arrest of Jonathan Pollard, a civilian U.S. naval intelligence analyst who provided Israel's Lakem Espionage Agency an estimated 800,000 pages of classified U.S. intelligence information. www.washington-report.org forward slash back issues forward slash zero for nine six forward slash nine six zero for zero one for dot htm. The GAO report also noted that several citizens of Israel were caught in the United States stealing sensitive technology used in manufacturing artillery gun tubes. An Office of Naval Intelligence document, Worldwide Challenges to Naval Strike Warfare, reported that U.S. technology has been acquired by China through Israel in the form of the Lavi fighter and possibly SAM surface-to-air missile technology. Jane's Defense Weekly, the 28th of February 1996, noted that, until now, the intelligence community has not openly confirmed the transfer of U.S. technology via Israel to China. The report noted that this represents a dramatic step forward for Chinese military aviation. Flight International, the 13th of March 1996. Amskel Rothschild, 41, is strangled with the heavy cord of his own towel robe in his hotel room in Paris. French Prime Minister orders the French police to close their investigation, and Rupert Murdoch, born of a Jewish mother and so a Jew by Ashkenazi standards, instructs his editors and news managers around the world to report it as a heart attack, if they need to report it at all. On 12 May United Nations Ambassador and Ashkenazi Jew, Madeleine Albright, when appearing on 60 Minutes, was asked the following by correspondent Leslie Stull, in reference to the years of United States-led economic sanctions against Iraq. We have heard that half a million children have died. I mean, that is more children than died in Hiroshima. And, you know, is the price worth it? To which Ambassador Albright replied, I think that is a very hard choice, but the price, we think, the price is worth it. Her comments cause no public outcry. In fact, the Holocaust of half a million Iraqi children is positively admired by the United States government when you consider less than eight months later, President Clinton appointed Albright as Secretary of State. Whilst appearing before the Senate committee, who were considering her appointment, Albright is literally chomping at the bit for the blood of more Iraqi children and she states, we will insist on maintaining tough UN sanctions against Iraq unless and until that regime complies with relevant Security Council resolutions. 1997 An army mechanical engineer, Ashkenazi Jew, David A. Tenenbaum, inadvertently, gives classified military information on missile systems and armored vehicles to Israeli officials, New York Times, 20 February 1997. The Washington Post reports U.S. intelligence has intercepted a conversation in which two Israeli officials had discussed the possibility of getting a confidential letter that then-Secretary of State Warren Christopher had written to Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. 
One of the Israelis, identified only as Duff, had commented that they may get the letter from Megger, the code name for Israel's top agent inside the United States. U.S. Ambassador to Israel, Martin Indyk, complains privately to the Israeli government about heavy-handed surveillance by Israeli intelligence agents. Israeli agents place a tap on Ashkenazi Jew and daughter of a rabbi, Monica Lewinsky's, phone at the Watergate and record phone sex sessions between her and President Bill Clinton. The Ken Star report confirms that Clinton warned Lewinsky their conversations were being taped and ended the affair. Interestingly, at the same time, the FBI's hunt for Megger is called off. On 29 October Edmund de Rothschild dies in Geneva. Interestingly on the exact same day Anton Sandor Levy, the founder of the Church of Satan also dies, who in his book, Satan Speaks, he states in relation to the Protocols of the Elders of Zirin. The first time I read the Protocols of the Elders of Zirin, my instinctive reaction was, so what's wrong with that? Isn't that the way any master plan should work? Doesn't the public deserve, nay, demand, such despotism? Kofi Annan becomes Secretary General to the United Nations. He is married to Nain Lagergren, a Rothschild, who he wed in 1984. 1998, the European Central Bank is set up in Frankfurt, the city from which the Rothschilds originate. 2000, George W. Bush is elected, so they tell me, President of the United States. Bush and his family claim to be descendants of the House of Plantagenet which is descended from the Royal House of Judah. 2001, on the 11th of September the attack on the World Trade Center is orchestrated by Israel with the complicity of Britain and America, under the orders of the Rothschilds as a pretext for removing the liberty of people worldwide in exchange for security, just as happened with the Riksdag fire in Germany where the citizens were lied to in order to give up liberty for security. They also will use the attacks to gain control of the few nations in the world who don't allow Rothschild central banks and so less than one month after these attacks, US forces attack Afghanistan, one of only seven nations in the world who don't have a Rothschild-controlled central bank. Less than a week before the 9-11 attack on 5 September, the so-called lead hijacker Mohammed Attar and several other hijackers made a still unexplained visit on board one of pro-Israeli lobbyist, Ashkenazi Jew, Jack Abramov's casino boats. No investigation is undertook as to what they were doing there. It is discovered that U.S. drug agents' communications have been penetrated. Suspicion falls on two companies, Amdex and Converse Infosys, both owned by Israelis. Amdex generates billing data for most U.S. phone companies and is able to provide detailed logs of who is talking to whom. Converse Infosys builds the tapping equipment used by law enforcement to eavesdrop on all American telephone calls, but suspicion forms that Converse Infosys, which gets half of its research and development budget from the Israeli government, has built a backdoor into the system that is being exploited by Israeli intelligence and that the information gleaned on U.S. drug interdiction efforts is finding its way to drug smugglers. The investigation by the FBI leads to the exposure of the largest foreign spy ring ever uncovered inside the United States, operated by Israel. Half of the suspected spies have been arrested when 9-11 happens. On 9-11, five Israelis are arrested for dancing and cheering while the World Trade Towers collapse. Supposedly employed by urban moving systems, the Israelis are caught with multiple passports and a lot of cash. Two of them are later revealed to be Mossad. As witness reports track the activity of the Israelis, it emerges that they were seen at Liberty Park at the time of the first impact, suggesting a foreknowledge of what was to come. The Israelis are interrogated, and then eventually sent back to Israel. The owner of the moving company used as a cover by the Mossad agents abandons his business and flees to Israel. The United States government then classifies all of the evidence related to the Israeli agents and their connections to 9 to 11. All of this is reported to the public via a four-part story on Fox News by Carl Cameron. Pressure from Jewish groups, primarily APARC, forces Fox News to remove the story from their website. Two hours prior to the 9-11 attacks, Odigo, an Israeli company with offices just a few blocks from the World Trade Towers, receives an advance warning via the internet. The manager of the New York office provides the FBI with the IP address of the sender of the message, but the FBI does not follow this up. The FBI is investigating five Israeli moving companies as possible fronts for Israeli intelligence. It is revealed that prior to the attack millions of dollars of put options on both American Airlines and United Airlines were traded. The FBI have promised to follow the purchasers up, but have never revealed their findings. That is because this would lead directly to Israel, the state behind the 911 attacks. Following the World Trade Center attack, anonymous letters containing anthrax are sent to various politicians and media executives. 
Like the 9 to 11 attack this is immediately blamed on Al-Qaeda, until it is discovered that the anthrax contained within those letters is a specific type of weaponized anthrax made by a United States military laboratory. The FBI then discovered that the main suspect for these anthrax letters is a Ashkenazi Jew, Dr. Philip Zak, who had been reprimanded several times by his employers due to offensive remarks he made about Arabs. Dr. Philip Zak was caught on camera entering the storage area where he worked at Fort Detrick which is where the anthrax was kept. At this point, both the FBI and the mainstream media stopped making any public comments on the case. Jewish Defense League chairman since 1985, Ashkenazi Jew, Irv Rubin is jailed for allegedly plotting to bomb a mosque and the offices of an Arab-American congressman. He dies shortly after slitting his throat in a suicide attempt, before he can be brought to trial. One week prior to the WTC attack, the Zim shipping company moves out of its offices in the WTC, breaking its lease and costing the company $50,000. No reason has ever been given, but Zim Shipping Company is half-owned by the state of Israel, the Rothschilds. On October 3, Israeli Prime Minister, Ariel Sharon, makes the following statement to Ashkenazi Jew, Shimon Peres, as reported on Kol Israel Radio. Every time we do something you tell me America will do this and will do that, I want to tell you something very clear, don't worry about American pressure on Israel. We, the Jewish people, control America, and the Americans know it. 2002, Webster's Third New International Dictionary, unabridged, reprinted in 2002, provides a new definition of antisemitism which has not been updated since 1956. It reads, antisemitism, one hostility towards Jews as a religious or racial minority group, often accompanied by social, political or economic discrimination, two, opposition to Zionism, three, sympathy for the opponents of Israel. It was definition, two, and three, that were added in the 2002 edition, just before the USA decide to invade Iraq under orders from the state of Rothschild, I mean Israel. Also this year, the Prime Minister of Israel, war criminal, Ariel Sharon, orders the massacre in the Jenin refugee camp in the West Bank. Best get that definition updated to protect these criminals. The D issues a report that Israeli spies, posing as art students, have been trying to penetrate US government offices. Police near the Whitby Island Naval Air Station in southern Washington state stop a suspicious truck and detain two Israelis, one of whom is illegally in the United States. The two men were driving at high speed in a rider rental truck, which they claimed had been used to deliver furniture. The next day, police discovered traces of TNT and RDX military-grade plastic explosives inside the passenger cabin and on the steering wheel of the vehicle. The FBI then announces that the tests that showed explosives were false positive by cigarette smoke, a claim test experts say is ridiculous. Based on an alibi provided by a woman, the case is closed and the Israelis are handed over to INS to be sent back to Israel. One week later, the woman who provided the alibi vanishes. 2003, the United States invade Iraq on the 19th of March, which this year is the holy day of Purim in the Jewish calendar. This, Day of Purim, is a day the Jews celebrate their victory over ancient Babylon, now based within the borders of Iraq, how interesting. What is also significant is that the previous US-led invasion of Iraq ended on the Day of Purim ten years earlier with the slaughter of 150,000 fleeing Iraqis under the current president's father, George Herbert Walker Bush. Purim is also the time when the Jews are encouraged to get bloody revenge against their perceived enemies. Ancient Babylon, I mean Iraq, is now one of six nations left in the world who don't have a Rothschild-controlled central bank. This war is mainly about stealing Iraq's water supply for Israel and is being fought with the blood of the American military which the state of Rothschild, I mean Israel control. Israel has always struggled for water, it had to steal the Golan Heights from Syria which provided Israel with one-third of its fresh water 36 years before, yet still in Israel water extraction has surpassed replacement by 2.5 billion meters in the last 25 years. This means the water is far more precious to them than the oil reserves which are the second largest reserves of oil on the planet. Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad states in a speech. Jews rule the world by proxy. They get others to fight and die for them. The police chief of Cloudcroft stops a truck speeding through a school zone. The drivers turn out to be Israelis with expired passports. Claiming to be movers, the truck contains junk furniture and several boxes. The Israelis are handed over to immigration. The contents of the boxers are not revealed to the public. Israel deploys assassination squads into other countries, including the United States. The US government does not protest. 
2004, two years into an investigation of APARX, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, the largest political lobbying group in the USA with over 65,000 members whose only purpose is to use the USA for the purposes of Israel, possible role as a spy front for Israel, Ashkenazi Jew, Larry Franklin. A mid-level Pentagon analyst is observed by the FBI giving classified information to two officials of APARC suspected of being Israeli spies. APARC hires lawyer Nathan Lewin to handle their legal defense, the same lawyer who defended suspected Israeli spy Stephen Bryan in 1978. Larry Franklin worked in the Pentagon Office of Special Plans, run by Richard Powell, at the time Powell, who was caught giving classified information to Israel back in 1970, was insisting that Iraq was crawling with weapons of mass destruction requiring the United States to invade and conquer Iraq. There were no WMDs, of course, and Powell has dumped the blame for the bad intelligence on George Tenet. But what is known is that the Pentagon Office of Special Plans was coordinating with a similar group in Israel, in Ariel Sharon's office. With two suspected Israeli spies, at least, inside the office from which the lies that launched the war in Iraq originated, it appears that the people of the United States are the victims of a deadly hoax, a hoax that started a war using the blood and money of American citizens for the purposes of Israeli oppression. The leaking of the investigation of APARC to the media on 28 August, 2004 gave advance warning to other spies working with Franklin. The damage to the FBI's investigation was completed when United States Attorney General John Ashcroft ordered the FBI to stop all arrests in the case. Like the Stephen Bryan case and the hunt for, Megger, this latest spy scandal seems destined by officials who have their own secret allegiances to protect, barring a massive public outcry. Police near the nuclear fuel services plant in Tennessee stop a truck after a three-mile chase, during which the driver throws a bottle containing a strange liquid from the cab. The drivers turn out to be Israelis using fake identifications. The FBI refuses to investigate, and the Israelis are released. Two Israelis try to enter Kings Bay Naval Submarine Base, home to eight Trident submarines. The truck tests positive for explosives. The national director of the ADL, Abraham H. Foxman, publishes a book entitled, Never Again. The threat of the new antisemitism, in which he states that the New Testaments lie, that the ancient Pharisees were responsible for the death of Christ, has been responsible for antisemitism throughout the millennia, and thus the New Testament of the Bible is hate speech and should be censored or banned. 2005, on the 20th of January, President Bush makes the following statement as part of his second inaugural address, when our founders declared a new order of the ages. This is not true. The founders did not declare a new order of the ages, President Roosevelt did when in 1933, he put its Latin translation, Novus Ordo Seclarum, on the dollar bill. On the 7th of July the London Underground Network is bombed. Israel's finance minister, Benjamin Netanyahu is in London on the morning of the attacks in order to attend an economic conference in a hotel over the underground station where one of the blasts occurred, but stayed in his hotel room instead after he had been informed by Israeli intelligence officials attacks were expected. There are now only five nations on the world left without a Rothschild-controlled central bank, Iran, North Korea, Sudan, Cuba, and Libya. Physics professor, Stephen E. Jones of Brigham Young University publishes a paper in which he proves the World Trade Center buildings could have only been brought down in the manner they were by explosives. He receives no coverage in the mainstream media for his scientific and provable claims. 2006, the Edmund de Rothschild Bank, a subsidiary of Europe's Edmund de Rothschild Family Bank Group in France, becomes the first foreign family bank that has obtained approval of the China Banking Regulatory Commission and entered China's financial market. The ADL ruthlessly leans on governments throughout the world to pass hate crimes legislation, as they are scared that the criminal cabal that is Israel and the Rothschilds is being exposed more and more on a daily basis, predominantly on the internet. Their job is to protect this criminal network, and what better way to do it than by passing laws in which anyone who exposes a Jewish criminal becomes a criminal. David Irving is sentenced to three years in jail in Austria for denying the Holocaust. It is important to note that the only historical event you can be arrested for questioning is the Holocaust. This is because this has been the Rothschild's greatest weapon in brainwashing you, the stupid goy. Is that the Jews are so poor and persecuted when in actual fact they control the vast majority of international finance and international corporations throughout the world. Resources